I would like to call the regular meeting of the Blue City Board of Mayor and Alderman Tuesday, September the 4th, 2018 at 6 p.m. Uh, roll call, Sharon, please. Alderwoman Madison. Here. Alderman Stratton. Here. Vice Mayor Harrington. Alderman Smith. Here. Yeah. Alderman Bowles. Yes. Richard, could you do the prayers? <coughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah. Our most kind and gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you so much for the beautiful day that you give us to enjoy. And Lord, we thank you for the freedom that we have together here tonight to do this business for the city of Blood City. And Lord, we just hope everything that we do here tonight is, is, is to your liking and to your satisfaction and to the citizens' satisfaction. And Lord, again, we thank for everybody here tonight. Be with each one of us as we go out throughout this meeting. For these things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. 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 I have a discussion and <coughs> action from Dave Wilson, the engineer with Madden and Craig. Thank you, Mayor. Um, thank you all for having me here this evening. I wanted to update you all on the current USDA projects going on. As you are aware, Contract 2, the water and sewer improvements, is continuing. Uh, this Since the last meeting, there's been quite a bit of work going on, mainly on water line work. And I have with me here uh, Sam Snyder from Thomas Construction Company that hopefully can update anything in particular or answer any questions y'all may have related to that work. Yeah, I, I noticed that uh, he had two patches up there on Carter Street for that eight-inch line. Yeah. Y'all put two valves in there. Where is that water coming from still going into the storm drain? Does anybody know? No, I don't have a clue. Because I checked it, and it, there's water still coming into that storm drain. Really? Yeah, and I don't know if it could be coming off of uh, Smith, uh, Carter Street. I went back at the church. There's a water pond uh, and that uh, storm drain back there. Yeah. So I don't think it's coming through. We'll, we'll look at it. Or is it the storm drain right at the Cedar and Carter? Yeah, right there at the stop sign. Uh, we'll, we'll have to look at it and see. Yeah, because he put two new valves in. I figured that'd take care of it. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. It's continued in the week. I know we're, where we're replacing line. We're going to continuously watch to see if we find that magic bullet or that leak and yeah. I know there's a if you come up on it I'd like to know what yeah and I think there's a, a hydrant in proximity there's a hydrant uh, in proximity to where that's at that we think possibly may be it may be it yeah uh, we'll you, be looking you, at that it is I think the nearest hydrant is up on James Avenue ain't it Okay. But those that's the only other appurtenance other than it being just joints, every joint or, or maybe an actual leak in You think maybe the hydrant could be leaking? Possibly. I think where it's you know, the way it stubs out normally there's a valve and, and of course the way all that's kicked it could be any any of those things there that could be loose causing that. But we will in uh, next meeting hopefully have an update on that and I have that so. stopped. We've been having it have trouble that after a while. <clears throat> yes, sir. There's a lot of water right there. Yep. Thank you all for bringing that up. That's good. I didn't want to bring y'all. Y'all coming on with it. <laughs> we should be able to get some papers in probably next two or three weeks. Yeah. Get some of that. We might get some lines tested. I think everybody's thinking it. We we have discussed that, and I know we had a, a two and a two and three quarter inches of base and an inch and a quarter of surface in for most of the overlays, and you know we were going to do it either in half lane sections or full lane sections, depending on how much we tear up. 
we may be able, or we're going to really watch that and Sam go with the recommendation where we are coming off on those sloped areas where the buses are to get, we may have to be thicker there is what I'm trying to get at. Man, man, yeah. Yeah. Man, yeah, and it'll, you know, it'll roll with you yeah. with the weight of the buses. So we will pay attention to that, though. Sam will go with y'all's okay. recommendation, yeah. WL, or whatever. We do have, uh, uh, I did not respond, but I did receive an email from Lewis Trivet with USDA today about our second upcoming meeting, and, and I know you, uh, I've been getting the paperwork for our second pay application coming up, so we'll schedule that uh, this week, Mayor, and I think it will be for the, was it the 12th we were beating around? I can't remember the date. We, we had a date. It was the second week, and yeah. Lewis was going to be in town to go over and invite y'all to come out to that. It'll be an update meeting where we tell USDA where we're at and then submit our second pay request. Sounds good. What was the uh, footage that you've done put in already? Uh, I, do, I don't have it with me. Yeah. I would say we're, I know we were over 2,000. Yeah, and, over 2,000? Yeah. And I'm it's, made up a lot of time, will we? Oh, yeah, it, it will. I mean, we've got crews. We've got a job finishing up right now. We're probably talking about another crew. Does anybody else have any questions? I do have updates on Contract 3, which is the work at the water treatment plant. Okay. And uh, as you all know, we had a work, work session about revising that scope of work, and we've proceeded on with doing that, and I have uh, been working on the revised preliminary engineering report, which I'll give to Lewis at our next meeting, Mayor, uh, with him next week, and I'll have it. I'm working to stay within the parameters I'm working are to stay within our roughly $460,000 for our costs, and, and you all, based upon the work session, you know the items we were talking about, the uh, SCADA, backwash tanks, sedimentation basin, tube settlers, chemical feed system, the filter media replacement, and reimbursement for pumps and motors you've already put in. So we've been working on all those items, been, and uh, John and Alan have been very helpful in feeding us information, putting that together, and again, we'll have that revision and a request uh, for USDA to review all that and hopefully give us the go-ahead to, to bid and, and make an award for a bid. Um, we did have the opportunity to uh, there had been some questions about the actual uh, operation of the plant what's been going on with the turbidities during wet weather and as you are aware sinkholes have come open there at the, at the uh, site and we did have an opportunity to visit the site last week and I had a geotechnical engineer here Mr. Russ Ashburn from Geo Services came on site and looked at it with John and I and he's given us he will be giving us a, a letter with uh, a proposal to do services to try to tell us what he How believes. Yeah, what he believes is going on, and uh, if those sinkholes are contributing directly to the turbidity in the uh, in the spring, and what can be done to remediate it, if anything. So I'm ant anticipating that from him. Hopefully, before that next USDA meeting, also for you all to consider going ahead with his services, either as part of this work or outside of this work and also to look at our filter media and in order to be able to operate the plant as quickly as we can and possibly putting together a document on that that we could go ahead with and then seek reimbursement if it's within an acceptable range dollar wise. Do you, do you know where those goes are coming from? Eh? No, they are up above the, uh, you know, in the wooded area. You can tell it's it's just right for it because there's so many water sources and the way the spring is, I think the as the rock up there the limestone erodes out, they'll just sinkholes will come anywhere, mm -hmm. and uh, they are above the spring, so we do believe that they are affecting it. I know we had another meeting with the Forest Service folks and they knew of some sinkholes in other areas uh, that we did not think would be contributing, but these uh, definitely, John, would you say? Is it on service? Is that on Forest Service property? The sinkholes are on Forest Service property. Yeah. Yes, sir. That's one of the things we're going to do, use possibly either a hand, probably a handheld GPS type method to get an X marks the spot northing and easting wise on USGS 
mapping so we'll see exactly where they're at. It would be, uh, we won't do it with the regular survey, you know, we'd, we'd be running control in for miles and miles. But Well, will they be responsible for fixing those? No, sir, they won't. I'll, anything I think that's remediated on the sinkholes, that's not part of their work. And uh, I think that they'll help possibly uh, keep an access restricted. I think they will do that. Mayor. They will be fixing one of those hoes. Beside the road, yeah. The road. Yeah. So We're it's one of them. In proximity to their roadway, they will fix that. They can drill that, can't you, and go down and see what's going on? Well, yeah, I would say what Russ will recommend the problem is going to be getting to them. I think they're in remote areas, and what they would have to bring in to do it, I do not believe they can go in. Can get the equipment in. Not no. from this side. If they can, and I've not been there coming from the back side, but if they get in, it'll have to be from that side. What you say, guys? Yeah. I mean, otherwise it's too remote. And actually, I think you could get something to the spring, but getting up above there, you know, it's just really tough. Yeah, I was up in there Sunday. Straight up and down. Yeah. Thank y'all. Thank you. Is uh, before you leave yes, the building? Mm -hmm. They was talking about pulling them screens out. I read in here uh, out of them tanks where it might wash them. Um, I, will we have to move them? Ever have to move them tanks out? The the actual filter tanks. Yeah. Uh, I, if we ever expanded, that'd be a possibility, I guess. But for what we're doing now, we would just replace the media inside of them now and keep them there. Well, getting a, getting an overhead crane up there. Yeah. Uh, from the last time I was in there, it's been a while back. That's a wooden frame in there. Yeah. And uh, you'll have to go in there and put some steel in there, and boy, they can be able to carry that weight on that. Yes, sir. I, that was at, at our work session. We discussed that. I don't think we've got the money to do it with contract three, but moving forward, it, you know, if we were to do that, we would need to design, you're exactly right, some type of different support system, both vertically and with the lateral movements to put some kind of hoist, you know, yeah. where we could get a hoist in there with overhead steel. Well, you're right. It would be nice if we just take the, take the tank straight out, so I was trying to take them straight up, then... Yeah. Try to get them, not where you got a crane to pick them up and drop them out. But it ain't gonna be able not to not any good way, is there? No. All right. Well, thank you. I like you're on the ball. Thank, thank you. you. Appreciate it. Okay, the next thing on the agenda is citizens' comments. Come to the podium, give you a name, address, <coughs> and phone number. Billy Double Cari, 209 Smith Street, Extension um, 5387931. I just want to say, I worked in the lawn care business for 21 years, and when it's hot like this, it takes a toll on you. And knowing from experience, because what some parts of my body is damaged from it, I think we should encourage the public works department to take a, maybe a five-minute break every, at least every couple hours, let them cool down. It's very dangerous out there in this heat. And the only reason I'm bringing it up this morning I got a call and one of my friends had a heat stroke and passed away. And it made me start thinking about these young men that are working out there hard, doing the same thing, trying to mow yards, trim trees, and so on. And all, it just takes a few minutes. I mean, I'm sure you all might not agree. You, you want them to work, and I know some of the citizens might think they're being lazy, but you've got to let them cool off and encourage them to drink plenty of water, please. We will have some Gatorade for them, and we have a 15-minute break in the morning and 15-minute break in the afternoon and lunchtime. Oh, I think they, I think they still take some breaks. David Harmon, 200 Hostin Drive. Uh, is the water plant working at all? Not at this time. How long has it been down? I uh, think about 11 months. It hasn't been down 11 months. About five months. weeks out of 11 months is what I've been told. It's operated for about, it's been down a good nine months. I've been on here 10 months, and it ain't operated since I've been on here that I know of. Alan? I'd say it's when we've been down at least six months. Well, when did we give the state of Tennessee a 
certification of our water quality. When was that? When was that due? No. The CCR report. Mm -hmm. A couple of months ago? How in the world do we do that if the water plant's not working? Where do we get the water to... to... So you sent them their water, not our water. Is that what you're saying? The state just requires you, like when you're purchasing water, yes, sir. you still have to distribute the same information they give their customers because we are buying Oh, so we just, use, we just use their... Right. And plus any of the tests that we are required to run as a utility... Our test results are recorded in that as well as Bristol Bluffs. Okay, and one other thing. I was watching the video the other day, and he says that we're paying Bristol Bluff, what, $600 a day for water? Is that is that what that, – I believe that's what you said. Rough, rough estimate. And you can do it for 12, chemical, $12 a day is what you said? The chemicals cost us about $12 a day. And once the plant's up and running, then you can get a full grasp of how much you save when you actually produce your water is to buy water. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anybody else have a comment? <coughs> oh, no. I'm looking at you. Yeah, That's okay. Hey, uh, I was telling you about the sidewalk down there. This is for a safety reason. There's a lot of people. There's a lot of money being made on that corner down there. I know exactly what you're making every day. I watch it from 5 o'clock. 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning till about 11 or 12 every night. People's walking up and down the side of that road out there in that ditch line. They've got to be a sidewalk up through there. And there's going to have to be a light put over on that there pole over there, city light shining over there because it's dark as heck and there's a lot of people coming in every night they can't even see to get in. But people walking up and down through there need the light. What are you talking about? Right out here on the corner at uh, where old Kaiser's building's at. You need to kind of put a study in on that because I'm old and you all are not as old as me. But I can see when that accident's going to happen. People walk down through there. They're walking in the ditch line down through there now to try to stay off the road. A lot of people walking down through there of the night, walking back up through there, somebody's going to get hurt. Engineers going to have to take a look at it and see take if it's enough it. space there. that pole right across the road there because you put a light there, it's going to shine over in there and you can see them coming up down the road. Okay? Okay. Take y'all can handle it. Okay. I'll see you later. Okay, thank you. I'll be on the corner. I'll see you. You know where I'm at. I thought you were going to take that guy to knock him off. I didn't stop that. Don't worry, I asked the job to be for him. He said, all right. Carolyn Payne, 4818 Bluff City Highway. Um, the microphones in front of you all up there, please use them. <laughs> and and the, you know, if if you, each person up there needs their own. <laughs> Richard, please put yours in front of you. We'd like we want to hear what you okay. Have to say. Okay. Okay. And I just one more thing. When you all ask questions. Uh, Mr. Mulberry, and uh, nice to meet you, Mr. Oliver. I'm the troublemaker. So, but I'm sure I've already been pointed out to you. Thanks. Glad to have you on board. Thanks. When they get questions, please come to the podium and answer. We want to hear. Alan, I would love to have heard what you said earlier, but. You have to come to the podium, and you got to speak into it. Thank you. Oh, the CCT, the CCR is on Bluff City's webpage, where we buy water from Bristol Bluff Utility District. And, David, how much do, on your calculator? Six months? Six hundred dollars a day. How much is it? I don't see any reports reflecting that. Does anybody else have any questions?
Okay, if not, we'll move on to discussion and action on the regular meeting of July the 3rd. Do we have a motion to approve? I make a motion to approve. I'll second. Take a vote, please, Shannon. Hey. No. Not in here. If you want to go to the hall, you can. Alder Stratton? Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bowen? Yes. Okay. And next is a special call meeting minutes of August the 1st. Do you have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. I'll second. Take a vote, please. Alderwoman Madison? No. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington? Yes. Alderman Smith? No. Alderman Bowling? Yes. Okay, the next one is regular meeting of August the 7th, 2018. Do we have a minute? Do we have a motion? I'll make a motion to approve. Second. Take a vote, please. Alderman Madison? No. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bowling. Yes. Okay, and the last one is special call meeting of August the 24th, 2018. Make a motion to approve. I'll second. Take a vote, please. Alderman Madison. Yes. Alderman Stratton. Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Bowling. Yes. Okay, and the next thing on the agenda is discussion and action. A public hearing on ordinance number 2018-006, Mr. Fry. An ordinance to adopt by reference state traffic offenses and rules of the road. Uh, this ordinance, which would add 15-901 to the Bluff City Code, would allow the city court to uh, hear more traffic offenses and more Class C misdemeanors. Okay, I'd like to open the public hearing. Does anyone have any comments? If not, do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the ordinance. Second. Take a vote, please. Alderman Madison? Yes. Alderman Stratton? Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington? Yes. Alderman Smith? Yes. Alderman Bowen? Yes. Okay, and discussion and action on the second reading on ordinance number 2018-006, Mr. Fry. An ordinance amending ordinance number 2018-003, known as appropriation ordinance for fiscal year ending June 30th, 2019. Be it therefore ordained by the Board of Mayor and Alderman of the Town of Bluff City, Tennessee, that ordinance... 2018-003 as the line item 413 water and sewer fund be amended as follows 413 water and sewer fund $921,388 Do we have a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve Oh, public hearing, she said It's a separate reading right. She said public hearing we have a public hearing already. And this was the second this reading. This is on the uh, 201807. Six. This six. We're on the six. We on six. Uh, the second reading. You already you already voted on six. Yeah. <laughs> we just did six. Oh, there was number We're on nine. seven. The number six was a traffic ordinance. Seven yeah. is the... Okay. Public hearing on ordinance number 2018-007. Mr. Fry, you read it. Do we have uh, do we have any citizen comments? Okay. Carolyn Payne, information previously given. Where ordinance 003, we're amending it. Wait a minute. You we're not in the Okay. That that that's what we're talking okay. about amending ordinance twenty eight. Am I correct, Mr. Fry? Yeah. Okay. Uh, water appropriation. That water and sewer fund. Uh, is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. 
we had 
Alderman Madison. Yes. Alderman Stratton. Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Bowler. Yes. Okay, the next thing is a uh, discussion session action on approving the contract for compass minerals for gravel. Um, we have we have this in the budget. Um, there was an increase of how much was the increase? Uh, there was an increase of twelve dollars and fifty nine cents over last year. That's per ton. Yeah. So what's it so cost total per ton then? Uh, one oh nine, one oh six seventy six. Last year's was ninety four seventeen. So we need approval. And, and that'll be for salt. Uh, yes, salt. salt. I see gravel. <laughs> Make a motion to approve. Second. I was thinking it was gravel too. That's one of where it's going to be put at. <laughs> Alderwoman Madison. Yes. Alderman Stratton. Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Bowen. Yes. Okay. Uh, <coughs> I really don't have the report just to say that the lights are down at the industrial park. They said it wouldn't be much longer until we uh, saw them down working on those. And um, uh, pretty much things have been going pretty good. Uh, we've had uh, several things to take care of. But as far as uh, we have two, two additional employees, and um, so we've been able to get more work done. And so that's working out. We never did. Uh, find anyone that wanted to um, work temporary uh, to mow uh, because they wanted insurance. So we never filled that position. Okay, Mr. Farmer. Uh, you all asked me to rehash my research I'd done on fireworks a few years ago. Uh, regulation, uh, Bristol and Kingsport have a total ban on the use in Sullivan County, um, they have to be a hundred feet away from an occupied residence and can be used between 2 p.m. and 10 p.m. Now those times are extended to midnight on the eve and the day of the following holidays, Memorial Day, July 4th, Veterans Day, and New Year's Day. Do you have any questions? Anybody have any questions? And we um, collected a little over $2,000 in delinquent taxes this month. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Okay, and the next thing on the agenda is discussion and action on the financial report. Uh, Shane, can you? Fund balances as of July 31st, 2018. <clears throat> General fund was $1,405,378. Sanitation fund was 28900 Special police fund was 13391 Debt service fund was 108908 Sinking fund $3,095. Water sewer fund seven hundred and sixty one thousand six hundred and forty four. We have a total fund balance of two million three hundred and twenty one thousand three hundred and sixteen dollars. Do we have a motion to approve? Make a motion to approve. Second. Take a vote, please. Alder Woman Madison. Yes. Alderman Stratton. Yes. Vice Mayor Harrington. Yes. Alderman Smith. Yes. Alderman Bowen. Yes. Okay, next thing is comments from the board members, Alderwoman Sandra Madison. 
I want to thank everyone for coming. Please come again. Alderman Jack Stratton. I appreciate everyone coming out and uh, appreciate everything you do and say and take time to come in here and voice your opinion on Because everybody's got a right to vote the way they want to vote. Yes. And uh, myself, I just want to do what's best for, for the city. We have a pretty little town that's getting prettier every day mm -hmm. in them streets there, thank you. I've lived in it for about 40 some years, so <laughs> that city, so. Uh, hey, nice Mayor Hamilton. Appreciate everybody coming out. Excuse my tardiness getting here. Um, thanks everyone for their comments. I think you got a special guest back there. <laughs> <laughs> We had to have his pictures as well as well. <laughs> <laughs> He's cute. Okay, Alderman David Smith. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out. Alderman Mr. Bowling. Appreciate everybody coming out. It's a little bit bigger crowd than it was last month, so talk to everybody and get them to come out. Okay. <clears throat> Chief the Peter. <clears throat> Uh, first of all, I want to take just a second. Today around 3 o'clock, you've probably seen on the news or heard uh, about the accident on 19E, uh, about the school bus and the vehicle that ran up under it. When you watch that on the news and you see that vehicle, I want you to imagine a body up under that. Oh. And where I'm going with this is this town is very fortunate and very lucky to have the firefighters they have here. What they did and what they do is amazing to see and to watch. Because if you've seen this, you would think, how will they ever get him out? Not only did they get him out, they got him out without hurting him further and safely. It's really, I'm sure it's truly amazing to watch them guys work. So this town's fortunate. They've got some dedicated, good firefighters. So if you see one out, thank them. Because they're, they do this for nothing. And they're just, they're just amazing to watch them work. But uh, that's all I have to say about that. But uh, for the month, we had a total of 248 calls. We uh, issued 101 citations, had 60 warnings, patrolled 5,559 miles, had 16 arrests, uh, 19 offense reports, had 16 alarms, 9 accidents, uh, 3 animal calls, 15 MSDs, um, 3 domestics, had uh, 2 DUIs, 2 drug arrests. Um, as you've seen on the news, Shooter's Head shut down. That's where we were training. That's where we were getting our firearms training from. Uh, been in contact, reached out to the new sheriff of Sullivan County. He's been amazing to work with us. I look for a great relationship with him in the future. Uh, he has extended his range to us for the cost of nothing uh, and anything we need. And we've been kind of working well with him. We're communicating a whole lot better. I see a lot of great things for the town in the future between us and Sullivan County. Um, but everybody's working hard and doing good, and things are going great. So, any questions? Keep up the good work. Thank you much. Can I say something else right quick, Mayor? Yes. Uh, I'm a member of the fire department down here, and I'm real proud to be a member of it. And there's some guys down there that uh, is trained, very well trained. He's been there for over 20 years. They're very well trained in this rescue and operation that they do. And I want to thank the city for the money that they appropriate in the budget for the city, for the fire department. And I really appreciate all of that. And I'm also, like I said, proud to be a member of that fire department. And, and where I was getting, getting with that, it's just amazing. If you, you know, we never know from one minute to the next what situation we're going to be in. Mm -hmm. That could have been anybody in here. I mean, it could happen to us. And believe me here, I'm very confident in those guys come out responding to I mean, they're that, they're that, it's amazing to watch them. So my hat's off to all of them. You pass it on to them. I will. And if we see them out, thank them for what they do. And also working on a class right now, the mayor and I are to get all the city employees a uh, class in CPR. Working on that right now. Thank you. Alan Moultrie. Good evening, Mayor and the Board. How are you all today? Uh, as of the month of August, the street department, uh, in the street department, the staff has been keeping up, I mean, trying to keep up with the mowing and brush pickup throughout town. Uh, we have been also replacing boards at the pavilion along with uh, getting the roof uh, of the pavilion repainted. Um, 
If you're one of the customers who take advantage of our brush pickup program, uh, you need to know the following. When it comes down to collection of brush from re residential company, uh, I mean uh, customers, uh, each residential customer shall get one free brush pickup per month without charge. Uh, what this include, no grass clippings will be picked up. The size of brush shall be no larger than two inches in diameter. And uh, number four, all brush shall be deposited on the curbside by residential customers for pickup by the town officials, I mean, by the town, and shall not be placed in any part of the street. Uh, number five, uh, after the residential customer has been credited with one free brush pickup per month, each additional load shall be picked up at the rate of $7.50. Um, this is under ordinance number 97-003, May 1997, as amended by ordinance number 97 dash zero zero eight august nineteen ninety seven the reason why i brought this up is uh as of late we've been having a lot of issue with brush piling up from everywhere and we really can't gauge whether or not those brush piles are being placed there from other locations and also um it's almost like the residents in the town soon as they put out a brush uh pile out they expect you to pick it up right then and there and like we have no way to gauge when they're done so i mean we do ask for you to come to city hall put in a work order so we can kind of get a grasp on what we got going on like i know we just recently had a storm that came through uh last month and uh the diameter of most of the brush is a whole lot larger than two uh two inches in diameter and we kind of weathered that storm and got it all done but uh just according to our ordinance uh we try to limit that to two inches in diameter so we can uh, make our work day a whole lot easier than trying to take on a, a whole tree, uh, per se. But um, other than that, uh, everything else uh, within the uh, streets department has been going fairly smoothly. Uh, when we get down to the sewer department in the month of August, we had no overflows that occurred. All pump station is currently operating in a satisfactory manner. Also, the staff has been flushing out sewer lines and also videoing lines for potential root intrusion. Uh, our latest find was on the corner of Jones Drive, where we found a massive buildup of root intrusion, which uh, was removed uh, removed from the line, and fl uh, the line was flushed by the city employees. So I do thank you all for getting us that camera. It's actually made things a whole lot easier. We're able to actually see what's going <clears throat> on in these lines and be able to correct those issues. Other than that. Um, that's all I have to report on at this current time. If you all have any other questions, I'm more than willing to field them. The deck down there is looking good. Yeah, it, it's coming along. It's trying to juggle everything that's going on within the town and get that done. I wish we could get it done at a, a more rapid pace, but uh, if you all are there with us, we'll continue doing, doing what job. we're doing, and uh, we will get that done. Other than that, any other questions? Thank you. John Oliver. Good evening, board. Good evening. In the uh, month of August, we uh, replaced uh, four meter setters and fixed out uh, and fixed three water leaks. We just got through with our uh, triennial leg and copper sampling. Every one of our samples come back in state compliance. And like Dave brought up, but we was removing the storage tank from the phase three so we could put in the tube settlers and sediment basin to lower our uh, raw water turbidity coming into the plant. So if anybody has any questions, I'll be more than happy to answer them. When do you think we'll be operation? Hopefully before too much longer. There's a couple things. I've got a guy coming tomorrow to uh, check out doing the... Uh, media filters and all that and getting his opinion on how much that's going to be and how hard it will be to do so once we get through there's just a few small minor things we got to work out then hopefully we'll be on the right path to getting it back up and running pretty quick About a month or so. i'm hoping
I'm if everything goes ideally, I'm gonna say 45 days, and that's if everything goes smoothly as far as being able to get media in, get the bids out, get them back in a quick return, and all that. We got a few little things we can. I'm going to attempt to get the plan up on the one good train and see if it'll hold and make sure everything's working. We might be able to run that one train and produce a little bit of water soon. If not, we will have to wait on the median. Me and Dave's trying to get that pushed out and get it going so we can get that done and get that plant back up and running. And if you can use the one train, you still would be able to put out, what was it, 100 and some? Uh, it'll max out at 113 gallons a minute, but we'll just have to see what it, that train will hold and still produce quality water. And then wasn't it someone that you talked with about the media that mentioned something about being able to run something from outside? Uh, yeah, that was Todd uh, that's supposed to be here tomorrow with Tech Code Industries out of Knoxville. They've been in the business about 45 years or so. so. And I know they're doing a big job for the city of Gallatin, and I've talked to the chief operator out in the city of Gallatin. And he says these guys are some of the best he's seen in his 30 years, and they're doing a job over in Spruce Pine, and Todd said on his way through to Spruce Pine he'd stop by tomorrow and check it, check our situation out and see what he could do to help us. Would a generator help us out there any if one of those old trees fall off on that? Power lines coming down through there, or after the power would go out. Would, well, it, it I mean, wouldn't hurt us to have one. You reckon that he could slide that in on the grant generator? I mean, we had one for five thousand dollars, and we turned it down. But I, you know, it don't have to be a big and just something. It carry it for a few hours until they get the power out. We'd have to find out from the electricians and stuff what it would require to do all that. But well, he, he, he ain't would, got much room. Well, he set that thing in the back somewhere back there on the side. That'd be another thing. We'd just have to see what size, see what the electricians would allow, and see about where we would have a feasible placement for it. What about tearing that old building down? We talked about that before. Go ahead and get that done. That way you would have room if you had to pull in tanks out there. It wouldn't, you'd take that backhoe out there and do it in no time. I mean, are we going to use that old building? It's mold in it. I think that was actually it? something that may be tied in on phase three. Is it? That's Is something. For them to do it? Oh. Yeah. Well. That way we wouldn't incur the expense of having to demo it and dispose of it ourselves. If we can do that in phase three, I didn't know that would be con probably considered in phase three. I'm just trying to get a little bit more <laughs> room for you. Yeah. Thank you. You're doing a good job, I believe. Thank you. Any more questions? I don't have any questions. All right. Y'all have a wonderful evening. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Yeah, I know we have new um, commissioners for Sullivan County, but I don't see any of them here. Okay, um, what'd you say? I said if there's one here, it'd be a rarity, wouldn't it? have been here, what, twice since I've been coming to me. That's the only time I've ever seen Well, you, ha you have new ones now. I know. Yeah. I think their meetings is the same night we are. No, it's on Monday night. I looked it up. Is it? Yeah, Monday. it is. It's on Monday. Yeah, I don't know why they can't make a meeting. Maybe one of you guys can call them and ask I did when I was up there. I forget what I'll call them. She told me she was going to make the meetings. She did. Remember, we had that discussion down here one night. She said, I'm going to make every meeting. Uh, I think her name was Sherry Russ. Yeah. She did. Well, now I know that they did. She did have some commission meetings, some um, um, some committee meetings on the same time as same as ours. Um, does anybody have any old business? Um, I will mention that um, the police department, where the lady came in and, and she wanted those speed bumps. Um, the police department, they've been continuing to investigate um, 
the speed and everything up there. And Chief, why don't you? Yeah, I, I actually met Mayor Down. We have been doing just what she's telling you we've been doing, and we're still seeing what we reported to her. We're still seeing not a problem. And I'm not saying that she doesn't see a problem, but I'm saying as our patrols are going through, we're not. And I'm not being reported anything from anybody else. We're not working any accidents. We're not having any other issues. So we're still on top of it, doing the very best we can, but that's where we're at this point. We ain't got no money to do that. Is there any new business? Anybody have any new business? What are we talking about? Do you have any new business? Yeah, I don't, I don't. Every day when I come out down there, I look over at the post office and I see that great big old field over there. And that sale sign out there and the way we're spending money and the way we're going in debt, we have got to get some real estate to try to get some people to come in here, open up a subway or something. I, I've walked that piece of property down, and we're going to have construction coming down through that. I'd like to see. I know what they want for it. I've called the realtor. I've called her twice. And uh, the price is $180,000. I know that's high. but uh, We missed the piece of property. Down here where those two houses are being put, it was only 25000 But uh, I checked on it. There is a deed to it. So uh, Jerry Hurt owns it. I wouldn't suggest that we pay 180 but I think we need to have a workshop or something on it and try to, to get the price lower because I don't see how we can keep going and paying for all this stuff and... I don't know. I'll just let it go there. If anybody wants to do anything about it, we'll work on it. If we don't, we won't. Well, we can have a workshop if you if you want a workshop. I mean, finance it for 70 years, but we've got to get some property to offer somebody to come in here and and do something. <laughs> do what? I mean, did you have comments you, that you didn't like it or what we should do? Well, that's an awful lot of money when y'all could have bought that piece of property down there for, what, $25,000? Mm -hmm. And y'all didn't want to buy that. That's a lot of money. Well, you know, if people don't want it. We don't have to buy it. I just brought it up, you know. I just think we need businesses in here, tax revenue for the citizens. Uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about these high water bills, you know. I've heard people talking about 80, 90, 100, 130. I, I don't know. Where are we going to go with it? Would it be all right if I approached the podium there and speak? Wait until we get to a citizen call. All right, that'd be fine. Okay. Does anybody else have any comments? Okay. Does anybody have any well, that was new business. Um, the next thing on the agenda, citizens' comments. Come to the podium, give your name, address, and phone number. My name is Brian Hunt. Uh, we recently relocated our family here to Bluff City. We purchased uh, property at 191 Lakeview Drive. And uh, just not here causing problems, just things I see and you know, I think needs to be mentioned. But um, one thing with the uh, with the water lines is Atmos Energy. Are they charging the city of Bluff City every time that they come out and locate underground gas lines? No. Okay. Because I'm tired of pulling them flags up to my yard every week. <laughs> um, another thing that I've noticed, and I just got questions. That's it. Not here in Causing You problems. go right ahead. Uh, a lot of Sullivan County Sheriff's Department presence in town. Is something going on, Chief, that I've mentioned no, that? A lot of times here. they serve warrants. They're, they're even told that so they're through here or they're through here passing through. Or if, if we have a bad call and sure. we have two calls going at one time, they will come assist us. Perfect. Um Something that he kind of hit on, and 
I'm probably going to run over my three-minute mark, and I'm sorry. Um, but vacant industrial and commercial buildings in town, why do we want to look at purchasing another piece of property when there's property here that maybe we could offer tax breaks or something to somebody to come in and buy that property? Oh, we have that service station out there. $250,000. Who wants that for that turkey? Right. No. I mean, that's mm -hmm. just crazy. I mean, I consider buying. Um, another thing, it, it don't take a lot of money to mow your yard and pick your trash up. Does the city enforce anything like that? I mean, yeah, we have. It's in the ordinance. Mm -hmm. it's in the ordinance. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Just, you come right through the heart of town, yeah. and it looks like a blister. We don't, we don't look like a blister. I don't. I just made a quarter million dollar investment to live here. You know? Congratulations. Thank I appreciate you. Um, property deemed unfit and dangerous. You know, you got. Yeah, the big white house. Yeah. Why is that still standing there? The, the one house. where we. Yeah, I've about. brought it up to a hundred times. Yeah. We've Building had it. Spectrum. We've had it clean before. Need to be torn down. Yeah. I keep bringing it up. Uh, I'll have the building inspector to take another look at it. Which house is that? Yes, we right. can condemn it. The house or? Oh, right down here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. The yeah. vines are growing all over? Wall on the inside yeah. Area. Yeah, I mean, it. you know, I don't let my kids get out and run around town. I let them run up and down Lakeview Drive, but, you know, if I did, I'd make sure they didn't go in that place. They're getting near it. Okay. Um, Thank you. I got one more. Okay. I'm new to town. you got to let me get it all out. <laughs> and I'm being good. I'm not interrupting nobody. Um, citizen policing program. Is there anything like that going on where we could help out the police department if they want to do a ride-along program or something like that? I mean, I know they have a strict budget that they have to follow. But uh, the chief would like to address that. All right, I, I'm in for Reserve officers. So right. you are local because we're looking for people in the community, in the city limits of Love City, that want to help. That's wonderful. Can I ride a tent? You come with me. Okay. Yeah. So but, but what we do, you just brought it up, we, uh, we do have a reserve program, and we, we've got like we've got four spots open right now, and we try to encourage people inside the city limits to come and do that, and I can give you all the information about it if you want to come by tomorrow. Okay. okay, thank you. Thank you for your time, Ira. Appreciate it. Come back any time. We appreciate it. Okay, does anybody else have a comment? Julie Bill Party, 209, Smith Street Extension, 423-538-7931. I just want to ask Mr. Smith, why is your name tag, or whatever you want to call it, label, where is it? Okay, why do you keep it there? I've brought that up two or three times, Judy. I just. But I've, I've been. I've been, been it's personal preference. Yeah. But why? I mean, oh, okay. I mean, you know, it's my. It's but why do you. If you, if you. It's like you're ashamed to be up there, and I don't understand it. You know, it takes courage to sit up there for anybody. And we pay and, money for it. That's but I just don't understand why you don't show it because it's like. You want to be up there, but you don't want to be known up there. I don't know. It just doesn't make no sense to me. Mm. You know, it seems like if you if you want to be up there, which and you know, and say you're, but you should be up to. But okay, like the gentleman that's new, he's the pepper, he would not know your name. He's picking. He's what I'm saying. You know, what I'm, saying? I'm not trying to sound like yeah. mean. I just it just seems strange to me that your name ain't up there. Well. Since you, you know, you agreed to be appointed. Well, you have your turn night. in a minute. Thank, well, thank, thank, thank you. We're laughing and giggle up there. We really want to hear what you all are, what you and Wright are laughing and giggling. I said he was pulling a Kaepernick like Colin took a knee for the flag. That's his version of it is what I said. And I was going to say that again. I think my voice usually carries pretty well anyway. But it's not carrying. My friends does not carry. I know hers does it. I normally does <laughs> Carolyn Payne, 4818 Bluff City Highway. I want microphones up there in front of each and every one of you all. 
and I am sick and tired of David Smith being attacked up here. Leave him alone. You can make your comments. I just made my comments. And if, right, the, boy, so if the boy wants they, to they are motion, they are uh, citizens' they comments. More, they will, but you're not on the board. What, what did I say about being on the board? I make a motion with your yeah, second. I second it. Out of here. Thank you, Paul. Alderwoman Madison. Yes. Alderman Stratton. Yeah, I make a motion we do that. Vice Mayor Harrington. No, we're not done. <laughs> Alderman Smith. <laughs> Alderman Bowling. Yes. Can we get an ordinance drawn?